As we've been talking about this morning, today is Austin Museum Day. Well, one museum you can check out in person with reservations is the Austin Museum of Popular Culture. And you can learn about a place that made Austin, Austin, the Armadillo World Headquarters. That's this week's entry in a brand new music-focused segment on Good Day called Tuning In. Once upon a time in Austin, Texas, this town truly was weird, a proud badge of honor. In just 10 years, between 1970 and 1980, an old National Guard armory turned music venue on Barton Springs Road changed the face of the Austin music scene forever. The other night I had a date with the fanciest ship in the United States, way out west in Austin, Texas. I knew I was on the, the trail of the name and sitting at 3rd and Congress looking at the old Vulcan Gas Company decided Armadillo World Headquarters uh, ought to be the name. The Armadillo World Headquarters set the stage for the capital of Texas to become known as the live music capital of the world. It changed the trajectory of Willie Nelson's career, helping give birth to outlaw country, and the music that happened within those ragged walls inspired countless musicians. Of course, the Armadillo World Headquarters, where I saw everybody from Ray Charles to Bruce Springsteen to the Ramones. So you couldn't have asked for anything better. The Armadillo was torn down, but part of its legacy remains at the Austin Museum of Popular Culture. The museum has a new exhibit celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Dillo's opening. As you can see on the wall behind us, we have some of the posters. There's Ry Cooter, there's Commander Cody, there's Jojo Gunn, there's Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. Oh, wow. Uh, Jerry Garcia, Dr. John. Leah Meckling and Freddie Kirch have been collecting the unique poster artwork for years. Really felt like it was an art form of its own and really a slice of Austin culture. Leah worked at the Armadillo and Freddie even graced the stage. By the late 70s, early 80s, I had a rock band called The Explosives. We played there a good half a dozen times. We opened for uh, Joe Cocker the Ramones, B-52s. Musicians were climbing all over each other to get to play there. It was a wonderful place. And all the hippie bands that had been kind of playing country music decided, well, maybe this is okay, you know? Maybe there is an audience that crosses over between the long-haired weirdos and the, uh, uh, what do you call it without saying the redneck populace? <laughs> Except that we discovered those two groups had a lot more in common than they did have in, you know, adversity. We got to love one oh. Aside from the posters, the Armadillo exhibit has clothing, photos, newspaper articles, hand-drawn ads, and a treasure trove of memories from Meckling and Kirch, like the time when the reclusive Van Morrison agreed to play a second night if the kitchen could make him their famous shrimp enchiladas, but the armadillo's cold storage unit bit the dust. His manager and he walked back there and took a look at that and decided there was something they could do. So they gave the money to go buy a coal vault. And so after that, the kitchen's coal vault was dubbed the Van Morrison Commemorative Coal Vault. <laughs> That's great. You can check out the Austin Museum of Popular Culture on southpop.org. With COVID-19 guidelines in place, you can also visit in person on North Lamar Boulevard via reservations. As for today, Austin Museum Day. Today for Museum Day, we're open at 11 a.m. till 5 p.m. We hope everybody has a chance to come by and check us out.